Good morning, church. First of all, thank you to Pathfinders for this amazing, fruity children's story. And me being nutritionist, I am very pleased that there was an educational component in it that you guys now all know that tomatoes are and avocados are very nice. And uh, I would also like to thank Nadia for the amazing song. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, please forgive me my sins and make me clean. Please fill our minds with your Holy Spirit, whether we are here present or online. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You guys have probably heard some people say that B-I-B-L-E stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. I strongly disagree. Well, Bible does contain instructions, instructions like laws and proverbs, but Actually, Bible is mostly a narrative. It's full of stories. There's a story how God created humanity from creation to the restoration of the new earth and universe. Now, you probably know that the first two chapters in the Bible are without sin. And the last two chapters in the Bible are without sin. And everything else in between is basically a story of God controlling the evil. I always loved sermons who are based on biblical characters. I believe that we can learn so much from their lives. They were recorded for purpose so that we can learn from their experiences. I have to also admit that over the years, I have heard a lot of sermons about David, Elijah, Jonah, but not so many about women. So I would like to correct this, and today I would like to talk about Eve. How many of you have heard a sermon about Eve? Wow. Okay, so you guys are excused. The rest of you must. <laughs> so, Eve, uh, is it, does it sound strange or? Anyway, Joe is the expert, so I will continue to talk. Eve was a remarkable woman. So how did she came into existence? Well, read with me in Genesis 2, 19. And what do we read? And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in the place. And then the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. I will talk about it a little bit more, but basically the idea was that Adam became lonely. God used this loneliness and out of Adam's rib created Eve. Ellen White writes in the Patriarchs and Prophets, Eve was created from the rib taken from Adam's side, signifying that she was not to control him as the head, nor to be trampled under his feet as inferior, but to stand by his side as equal, to be loved and protected by him. A part of man, bone of his bones, and flesh of his flesh. She was his second 
self, showing the close union and affectionate attachment that should exist in a relationship. Now, what else was remarkable about Eve? Have you guys thought about it? She had no childhood, no adolescent, she had no parents, and she had no siblings. She had no genetic abnormalities. So there was not the weird nose she inherited from Aunt Jane or flat feet from that. God created her perfect. Her form was noble and full of beauty. She was sinless. Her personality was utterly delightful. Her mind could comprehend divine things. Her affections were pure. Her appetite and passion were under control of reason. She was holy and happy in bearing the image of God in the perfect obedience to his will. Additionally, she was the only woman around. She didn't need to worry about supermodels or other, any other woman. She was the definition of womanly beauty. No one was taller, thinner, younger, or prettier. She was the it. Created on the sixth day, she was single for a few hours, dated Adam for another few hours, before she got engaged and married. Now, if you go to Genesis 3.20, you can read something strange which happened to her and says, and Adam called his wife name Eve before she was the mother of all living. So we don't do this today. The girls we marry come with names already. Although in some cultures, the girls do change their last name. Now, do you remember high school? Once the period was over that all the girls were geese and all the boys were pinheads, you came into this strange period where the girls you liked didn't like you, and with the boys, you know, vice versa. And then one day this moment happened that actually the girl you liked liked you back. And you went out on the first date and you never thought about how amazing it is to actually talk to a girl not to mention to hold her hand. Well, I believe that with Adam was this experience hundreds times magnified. The Bible does not tell us how frustrated he became, but I can imagine how he was sitting maybe in the dust and in the shade of an amazing tree thinking, well, I have this amazing garden with all these animals and I am alone. And when Adam saw her, he was out of his mind. He became a poet. I just read it to you, you know. This is, remember, in Hebrew, this is poetry. <laughs> this is the bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. I will give you the English translation. Oh, baby, you got it right this time, God. <laughs> and then what happened next? God instituted marriage. In Genesis 2.24, it says, it's the famous passage. And therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Actually, marriage and Sabbath is something we have taken from paradise. So marriage is something which is honorable. 
Well, and it was Friday afternoon. I can imagine that there was the breeze in the cool of the day, and there was the first wedding. I am speculating that it was Archangel Gabriel who walked Eve down the aisle, or maybe her guardian angel, because who was officiating the wedding? It was Jesus himself. And actually, we have just few passages out of the wedding uh, ceremony or wedding. Uh, so let me, tell, let me read this to you. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of earth, and every tree whose fruits yield seed to you, it shall be food. Well, and then I can imagine, it's not in the text, but this is how it was finished, and in the power vested in me by heaven, I pronounce you husband and wife. Adam, you may kiss the bride. Now, there is something interesting about the wedding sermon. We don't do this today. It came actually with recommendations what to eat. I have been to many weddings, and I don't know why pastors leave this passage out today. And then what happened? And then God sent them off for a honeymoon in this perfect garden, which is called Eden, which means delight or pleasure. And the next morning was Sabbath. What a beginning of life. What a beginning of a marriage. What a day. Which brings me actually, I don't know if you guys have heard it, but apparently Adam and Eve were the only couple who have ever had a perfect marriage. Do you guys know why? Because Adam did not have to listen about all the other men Eve could have married. And Eve did not have to listen about her mother-in-law good cooking. I wish I could conclude here. And I would say, and they lived happily ever after. But unfortunately, after Genesis 2 comes Genesis 3. And maybe you are thinking, how did she blow up this amazing marriage, this amazing man, this amazing opportunity? How could a woman, with all this going for her, to ruin her life so completely? But the irony is, Men do it every day, and women do it every day. Have you guys wondered, when you sometimes read in the newspaper, you have a beautiful couple, they are financially secure, they have healthy children, and that they have everything, and then he cheats on her. And you would say, why? Why would he do something so stupid? Why would he ruin everything he has? The reality is that we all throw away perfectly wonderful lives because of our, of our foolish, sinful desires that take us to places we should not go and do things we should not do. We realize that although our first parents were created innocent and holy, they were not placed beyond the possibility of wrongdoing. Now, in Patriarchs and Prophets, on page 52, 
This is what Ellen White writes. Our first parents were not left without a warning of the danger that threatened them. Heavenly messengers opened to them the history of Satan's fall and his plot for their destruction. Unfolding more fully the nature of the divine government, which the prince of evil was trying to overthrow. Now, I don't know if you also know that they could have been tempted just once. In uh, Signs of Times on January 16, 1879, this is what she wrote. When Adam and Eve were placed in the beautiful garden, they had everything for their happiness which they could desire. But he chose in all wise arrangement to test their loyalty before they could be rendered eternally secure. They, have to, they were to have his favor and he was to converse with them and they with him. Yet he did not place evil out of their reach. Satan was permitted to tempt them if they endured the trial they were not to be in, so, sorry, they were to be in perpetual favor with God and heavenly angels. He had one chance. And if they passed, he would not be able to tempt them again. Unfortunately, there is Genesis 3, 6-7. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for good, that it was pleasant to the eyes and tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruits and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then their eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they sued fig leaves together and make themselves coverings. The New King's James Version text is a little bit dry. I'm going to read it to you, how it is translated in a clear word, which is actually an Adventist paraphrase. And when you will hear it, you will actually experience the drama in it. The woman saw how good the fruit looked as the serpent ate it. Suddenly, she felt a strong urge to eat it too. She took a bite and instantly felt a surge of energy. Excited, she took more fruit and ran to find her husband. When Adam saw her, he knew what she had done and also what the consequence would be. But in the blush of her excitement, she looked more beautiful than ever. He couldn't bear the thought of living without her, so he quickly took the fruit and ate it also. If attraction affected three areas, taste, vision, and intellect. Women are physical, emotional, and spiritual in nature. In Eve's case, the serpent sank his fangs into all three by appealing to her physical appetite for food, her emotional appreciation of beauty, and her spiritual desire to be like God. Have you, ever, have you ever, guys, played a little bit with what I call blessed imagination? Imagine if the whole story was different. I'm going to read to you my version of blessed imagination of Genesis 3-2. Imagine if this is how it played out. When the woman realized that the serpent is talking, she ran back to her husband. They came back together. They told the serpent that they were warned about his lies. 
They told him that their love for Adonai is very much and strong, and they are not interested in disobeying him. They left, and the speaking servant was never ever seen again. The reality is that Adam and Eve sinned for different reasons. And Eve sinned for the desire to be like God. Adam sinned because he could not imagine life without Eve. The sad consequence is that, or the sad reality is that the consequence was the same. And this is the first lesson we can learn from the story of Eve. Whatever you make excuses for sin, sin will stay sin. In Patriarchs and Prophets, on page 55, Ellen White says, Eve really believed the words of Satan, but her belief did not save her from the penalty of sin. She disbelieved the words of God, and this was what led to her fall. In the judgment day, men will not be condemned because they consciously believed a lie but because they did not believe the truth, because they neglected the opportunity of learning the truth. We must set our hearts to know what is the truth. Fortunately, after the sin, after this horrible disaster, comes immediately a beam of hope. Because in Genesis 3.15, we read what? The first messianic prophecy. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, and he shall crush your head and you shall crush his heel. So what can we learn from the life of Eve? I already told you the first thing. Now the second thing is, you can do million good things in your life when you make one mistake. This is how you will be remembered. Unfortunately. But the third thing which we should learn from the life of Eve, I will like to turn it around is that we all need to learn to forgive and to forget. You you all know King David. Uh, Looking up by the standards of today's society, he would be considered rapist, murderer, and liar. Now, interestingly enough, you guys all know the story of King Solomon having a dream, right? And what did he request in his dream? He requested wisdom. But I don't know if you know that actually God answers him and he says something absolutely strange. In 1 Kings 3.14, He suddenly says, so if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, now listen to this, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Oh, I can imagine some people say, what do you mean? (laughs) As my father walked in. (laughs) Everything is forgotten and for." given because David repented. And this is how it should be in our lives when you ask for forgiveness. Do not 
let yourself be plagued by guilt. It's done. It's forgiven. It's not there anymore. Unfortunately, this is not how we are as humans. When I was in my high school, I had a classmate. Her name was Andrea. She was a very good student. And then something happened. She got pregnant. Well, in those days when I was young, she was eventually expelled from the school. But the problem is that from then day on, when we talked about her, nobody talked about Andrea. What did they talk about always? The girls who got the girl who got pregnant. I'm going to ask you how many of you have ever lied? Please do not raise your hands. Does this make you a liar forever? So, you know, I am not naive. But the problem is that Eve has a very bad rap because of one thing which she did. And so let's not deny the power of Holy Spirit which can truly change people. And let's not, do not defy people by one act which they did in their lives. It's not fair. And this is not how God sees us. Think about David. Now, after the fall, the Bible is very sketchy about Eve. Uh, one thing we do know is that she became the mother of all living. So if uh, they ask you to fill out the genealogy, if you are in a playful mode, you can start Adam and Eve. Uh, then the next one would be Noah and uh, the wife of Noah. Actually, I looked it up. Uh, the Bible doesn't say what the name of Noah's wife was. Uh, but apparently the Jewish tradition says that she was Nama. She was the sister of Tubal Cain. You can find it in Genesis 7-7. And the name means beautiful or pleasant one. Okay, so if you are playful with your genealogy, so you will start with Adam, Eve, Noah, Nabal, and then you can start with your grand 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 grandfather and mother. So indeed. I was thinking about it. Think about it. All of us, we have in us a little bit of the original DNA from Eve and from Adam. It's amazing. Back to Frank and his emphasis on creation today. The Bible tells us that she gave birth to many sons and daughters. Probably some of her sons and daughters became evil. She has experienced sorrow which we cannot imagine because only she and Adam experienced the life and the world before the fall to sin. And we don't know how long she lived, but Adam lived 930, so women live a little bit longer, so let's make it 960. Can you imagine for 960 years to live and see the consequences of sin? Now, eventually, the Bible tells us in Genesis 4.1, she became a mother, and what was the name of her first son? Cain, and what he gave, he, the name means I have acquired men. I am not going into this because this could be another sermon, you know. Uh, why did she give her such a name? Because she thought that Cain is what? The fulfillment of the messianic promise. And can you imagine the disappointment that this man became the first murder. Her second son was Abel. 
which means breath and vapor. And he was the first victim. And actually, he was the first ever person to die. But then came Set. And uh, Set means appoint or compensate. And Set was a joy because Set is the beginning of the lineage of Jesus. And eventually, the offspring of her did crush the serpent's head. So one day in the future, in the New Jerusalem, she will be standing next to Adam, restored and happy. Amen.